If you only watch this one video, you will be able to lucid dream more reliably, more often than 90% of the people out there. So I'm gonna share my favorite lucid dreaming techniques, tips, you know, low hanging fruits, things I've learned over the several years of teaching thousands of people how to lucid dream all around the world. So if there was one video that you would pay attention to, it should be this one. So I would encourage you to turn off your phone, you know, put notifications on silent, close your other tabs and just pay attention to this, just this one video right now and you will learn more about lucid dreaming than you probably have in the last five years. Okay, so like I said, I've spent the last 10 years or so teaching people how to lucid dream from all around the world. Okay, I've managed to get this channel to over 100,000 subscribers. My articles, videos, work has been read by people in almost every country in the world. And more than that, I've had thousands of people go through my programs and learn to lucid dream when they couldn't before. Now, the reason that's happened is because I'm really passionate about this topic and I really do enjoy teaching lucid dreaming. I enjoy the mind, spirituality, consciousness, and psychology. And I like kind of fusing them together into one kind of holistic approach. So hopefully that comes across in this video. Make sure you leave a comment if you don't understand something. I will try and reply to everybody. And beyond that, just enjoy yourself and stick around for the whole video. So firstly, I want to start out with the basics, but I'm not going to go and explain, you know, the absolute basic things I have said in many other videos. Okay, I'm going to explain the basics with a twist. Let's call it beyond the basics. So not only do you want to make sure, okay, that you are meditating for at least five minutes, you want to make sure that you're meditating every single day. And if you haven't learned how to meditate, I do have other videos about that on my channel. It's actually pretty simple to meditate. All you need to do is just count your breaths from one to 10 and just focus on your breaths. That's all you need to do. You don't need to focus on, you know, any kind of mantra or uh, affirmation if you don't want to, especially if you're new to meditation, you should probably just do what works for you. What's actually going to keep you lucid dreaming for the longest period of time. So just do a really simple meditation, but make sure you do it every single day. Now, of course, reality checks. Okay, we should all be doing reality checks. I have a free lucid dreaming app on iPhone and soon to be Android, which will give you like reminders, random reality check reminders that will tell you to do reality checks at specific times. That should help you to remember, but if not, you can do any kind of reminding technique, all right? You could write it on your phone lock screen. Okay, are you dreaming? You could go as far as me and just tattoo it on your thumb, literally like a reminder that says, you know, are you awake or not? Or you can just write a note and put it on your fridge, put it on your mirror. Okay, there's many different ways you can go with this, but the key is you need to be doing reality checks often, okay, so every day and often, but you also need to be doing them every time you see, hear, or feel something strange. That's probably the most important time to do them because those are the moments that are more likely to show up in your dreams. It's not the mundane stuff, you know, it's usually the things that are different to what you normally experience, it's strange, unusual. This is why, at least for me, I lucid dream and have more vivid dreams much more often when I'm traveling or when I'm doing something, you know, something unusual, something I don't usually do. And those are the times when I have the most lucid dreams randomly or, you know, seemingly randomly because that's when I'm more likely to remember those experiences when I actually, you know, go to sleep and, and dream about them. So make sure you reality check when you see or experience something strange. Now, if you are going to focus on a technique, okay, just make sure you focus on one technique only. And in that case, focus on the mild. The mnemonically induced lucid dreaming technique is probably the most effective technique. And it certainly is the one that in a recent study was shown to be pretty much the only technique that was really effective for beginners compared to the control group. And that being said, it's also one of the easiest techniques because you don't have to, you know, set a crazy alarm, wake up in the middle of the night, feel tired, and then, try and hit the perfect timings for when you like fall back asleep and you don't have to do any of that. You rely on your prospective memory, which is your ability to remember something in the future. This is the most powerful way to lucid dream. If you have to learn any technique, it would be the mild. So you should also focus on, and this is really important, you need to focus not just on awareness and lucidity at night, but during the day as well. It's been referred to as all day awareness. Now all day awareness is basically the ability to be self-aware and I guess you could say lucid all the time, not just in the nighttime. So the benefit of that is that you, by being self-aware all the time, you're much more likely to randomly lucid dream because you have that foundation of awareness all the time. All day awareness, I think it's called ADA uh, technique, is really powerful, okay? So and a good example is when you're commuting to work, most people are sort of in autopilot mode. They're not really paying attention to what they're experiencing. They're just letting themselves go through the motions, right? And we all do this at some point, you know, whether it's when we're listening to 
someone speak that we don't like or when we are commuting to a job that we don't like. Maybe even when we're getting changed at the gym. These kind of boring moments which we've experienced so many times before, we can tend to go into autopilot during those moments. And what that does, you know, the more we do that, the more moments we have that are on kind of autopilot, the less likely we are to lucid dream because we lose that sense of awareness. Just being aware of what you're doing, like knowing what you're actually doing and being really present in the moment is gonna go a long way to helping you lucid dream. And this is what I believe separates the kind of natural or random lucid dreamers that everyone thinks are so lucky from people who struggle. And it's just that they tend to be natural lucid dreamers because they're actually practicing that all their awareness, even if they don't realize they're doing it. They are very self-aware. Now, some of the students that have gone through my breakthrough course are killing it with this technique. So all you need to do to get started with it is just to really focus as often as you can during the day on awareness being aware of what you're doing, think about why you're doing it, and just being kind of grounded in the present moment. So there's a few things you can do. For example, you can routinely ask yourself, where was I 10 minutes ago? Where am I going right, you know, in 10 minutes in the future? What am I doing now? How is my body feeling? What sounds can I hear? Just being present in the moment is gonna go a long way to helping you lucid dream. All right, ninja tip number two is motivation. We all struggle with motivation from time to time, but with lucid dreaming in particular, you've got to remember that this is a complex skill that you can't really learn in one day. You can't even learn it really in one week. You need to practice the techniques and really get to feel what works for you, what doesn't work for you, you know, and what you actually are going to practice on a long-term basis, what techniques are going to become part of your life and part of your habits. Now, the only way to do that really, and to stick with it long enough is to be motivated. So you need to keep yourself motivated. And this goes beyond just, you know, thinking about what you'd like to do, thinking about what you might want to experience in a lucid dream. It goes beyond that. You have to have some kind of reason, some kind of why, as in why are you trying to learn how to lucid dream? This is what separates lucid dreaming from, let's say, playing a new video game. With a new video game, you know, you don't really have to have a reason for buying it. You can just see a trailer for the game, think, oh, it looks kind of cool, you know, maybe that will be fun, I'll give it a try. It's very different to lucid dreaming because with the video game, you can just play it immediately and like you can immediately get the results. You can just buy it, download the game, play it right now, and let's say tomorrow you're bored with it, you move on to the next thing. Lucid dreaming is not like that because it takes longer than a day to learn it. It takes longer than a week to learn it. And so you need a motivation or a reason to actually want to stick with it and learn it because otherwise you'll just give up. And there are so many people in the comment section of my videos, in Reddit, in Facebook groups, who they got excited at one point about you know, the idea of lucid dreaming, but then they just lost the interest completely and they got bored, they didn't stick with it. And so they didn't do it. They didn't stick with it long enough to actually experience the results. So motivation is really important and there are several ways you can keep yourself motivated. But firstly, just scroll down at this moment while you're still hearing my voice right now and just comment in the section below, I will lucid dream, just to kind of affirm your intent to learn how to lucid dream. Just say, I will lucid dream or I can lucid dream. Affirmations are a really powerful way of actually, you didn't scroll down and comment, did you? <laughs> but affirmations are a really powerful way of train, I don't want to say tricking, but training your subconscious mind to actually change its belief system. Okay, so by telling yourself the same thing over and over again, in this case, I will lucid dream, I can lucid dream, I can control my dreams. By telling yourself that over and over again, eventually you'll start to believe it. Your subconscious mind will believe that to be true. And the thing about the subconscious mind, your subconscious beliefs are the foundation basically for everything that you do in your life. So if you have a subconscious belief that you can lucid dream, your mind will constantly look for ways to confirm that truth. Whether it's, you know, putting more effort into the techniques or trying harder, or just maybe it just flicks that switch in your brain that makes you be able to lucid dream. Because your subconscious mind wants what we call congruence, okay? It wants your beliefs to match your conscious beliefs and your thoughts, to match your actions, to match your results. And there needs to be what we call congruence between all of these different things. Otherwise we have what's called cognitive dissonance or you know, some kind of discord in your brain where you believe something at a subconscious level, but because you're not experiencing it, your conscious mind and your subconscious start to think, but hold on a second, but I can lucid dream. I believe I can, so why am I not doing it? 
And so by having that focus on the belief that you can lose a dream, you don't really need to understand how it works, but it just does, okay? Your subconscious mind will start to shift uh, to actually making that true. So another way you can keep yourself motivated is to be immersing yourself in inspiring, uplifting, positive, and motivate, yeah, I guess motivating videos about lucid dreaming. So sci-fi movies, fantasy movies, superhero movies in particular. I was recently watching all of the X-Men films again. They're really good for this kind of thing because they physically show you what it's like to have a superpower, to be able to do crazy things like fly, teleport, run really fast. I've got a couple more really powerful tips and uh, kind of a, a really important concept I want to share with you. But first, I want to tell you a bit more about this course that I mentioned earlier, which is the Lucid Breakthrough course. I won't talk about this for very long, but basically it's a super effective video course that I made specifically for people who have actually tried other things. You've tried books, you've tried, you know, courses and systems and even binaural beats and supplements, but nothing is working for you reliably. Because the thing is, you want to be able to lucid dream reliably and whenever you want, basically, right? You want to actually have the experience and learn the skills that will let you do that. And so this course is specifically for that. It's a high quality video course. You'll get like a members area, PDF notes for every lesson. You can study and keep yourself motivated. There's also audio downloads for each lesson. So if you want to listen while you're walking the dog or climbing a tree at the gym, you can do that. And there's also kind of several bonuses and things to keep you accountable within the system. So the Lucid Breakthrough course, you can click the link in the description and go and check that out. I believe that's the best solution for you if you struggle to lucid dream or if you've tried other things, but they've not really worked for you. And the thing is you could figure this out yourself, but it might take you years. You know, you might never figure it out. Um, so that's why this course has been specifically designed. I've had conversations with countless people, probably thousands of, of people all around the world to really dig into why they can't lose a dream. And I've really, you know, brought it out to the surface and made this course specifically to address the things that stop most people lucid dreaming. So that in theory, if you follow this, this course, if you follow these steps, you will lucid dream no matter what has been st stopping you before, even if you've been struggling. So please go and check it out. The link is in the description and it would really support me in this channel if you were to get on board with the course. So if you do that, I highly appreciate that and uh, thank you so much. So let's get back on with the video. All right, so the third kind of section that I wanna break into here is your mind. So when I talk about your mind, I mean your expectations, your beliefs, the kind of expectation of time frame and uh, how realistic it is that you'll learn, and also whether it's scary, dangerous, real, or whether you can get stuck or any of that kind of stuff. So your mind and your subconscious mind, like I said, really are a key part of whether you can lucid dream or not. If your subconscious mind does not believe you can lucid dream, it's gonna constantly stop you from doing it. So the first focus really needs to be on affirmations, making sure that every day you're writing down, I can lose a dream, you know, 10, 20 times. There's a reason that it was a punishment for kids when they were in school. They had to write lines because they knew that if you make someone write something out again and again, I will not throw paper in class. I will not throw paper in class. Eventually, it's gonna be pretty much stuck in their brain. And so they will believe that statement. And it works the same for lucid dreaming. So just write down your affirmations again and again on a piece of paper. Uh, try and do this every day, okay? But if you can't, then at least, you know, at least a couple of times a week would be really good. You also need to master your expectations about lucid dreaming. And I've made another video about this. You can check it out on my channel if you uh, haven't seen it yet. But you need to remember that like any skill, lucid dreaming takes time. And compared to other skills, lucid dreaming is quite difficult. I mean, it's not the most difficult thing to learn, but it's also not the easiest thing to learn. It's not like just plugging in a video game and learning how to control the character. It's actually a lot to do with your self-awareness, your being able to do reality checks, prospective memory, and also your dream recall is another big part of this, which uh, I'll get onto in a minute. But it's a lot about your expectations. And if you go into this thinking, oh, I'm gonna learn how to do this in one day, and then you don't do it in one day, obviously, because not many people can do it that fast, your subconscious mind is gonna suffer a bit of a, a blow there because you went into it thinking, oh, I can do this quickly, I can learn this, it's gonna be great. And then you didn't have that experience. And then so now you're thinking, what's happened? Did I do something wrong? Maybe it's not for me, maybe it's not real, maybe it's too difficult, okay? And then you give up. This is why I mentioned motivation. And the Breakthrough Course is actually really good at keeping you motivated. There's a whole section on that, explaining in detail how to do it, but you need to keep yourself motivated because if you're not motivated, you'll give up before you've had the chance to actually build up the skills and be anywhere close to uh, lucid dreaming properly. 
And the same can be said for people who think, or people who, I should say, people who've read experiences about lucid dreaming, like on a forum or something, or maybe you've read a blog post or some comment somewhere from some person where they've said, oh, I tried to lucid dream, but it was terrifying. It was really scary. And I had this nightmare and it was, you know, it was a bad experience. If you read those things, it's going to subconsciously make you expect those things. So whenever you read a comment about lucid dreaming, good or bad, okay, you need to constantly remind yourself that everyone's experience is different. It's a very subjective thing, okay? Only you can decide what your experience is going to be. So if you read a comment from someone saying, oh yeah, I tried to lucid dream and then I got stuck in the floor and then some dragon tried to eat my arms off, that's their experience, okay? Who knows, maybe they are a horror fan, they've been playing too many video games, they were staying up late drinking Red Bull and then that's the dream experience they had. That doesn't have to be your experience, but it will be if you read a comment like that and then expect that to happen. So every time you read a piece of information or a comment, ask yourself, do I want this experience? And this applies not just to lucid dreaming, but to any information you consume, any headline you read, you need to ask yourself, do I want that to be true? If the answer is no, then you need to really make an effort to say, okay, this is what I'm experiencing. This is the headline. This is the comment. This is the story, but that's their experience. That's not my truth. That's not my reality. And that's super important to understand. Now, there are a lot of questions that I get in comment sections, in you know emails and messages and things like that. So the first one is, is lucid dreaming scary? Or really they ask, is lucid dreaming dangerous? Now, the simple answer is no, lucid dreaming is not dangerous because you're not really doing anything other than experiencing something in your own mind while you're sleeping. That being said, you are connected to, in some cases, to your higher self and to other dimensions and guides, but it's kind of like a consensual thing. You have to open up to that in order for it to happen. And if you don't open up to that, you're basically just laying, you're sleeping, you're having a dream uninfluenced by other things. So no, lucid dreaming cannot be dangerous. Uh, the only way it would be dangerous is if you were constantly interrupting your sleep again and again, trying to do the wake back to bed method. And over time you just had sleep deprivation and then that led to you not being alert enough while you're driving your car, let's say, then it would be dangerous. Is it easy to lucid dream? The truth is no, it's not easy to lucid dream because when you're, as with any skill, when you first learn it, there is what's called a learning curve. The learning curve is basically how fast you can go from knowing nothing about the topic to knowing enough about the topic to be able to self-correct yourself and know where you're going wrong and kind of improve over time. Lucid dreaming has quite a high learning curve, but you can make it a lot easier by just picking the low-hanging fruit stacking the odds in your favor and doing the basic things in the right way, which is basically what I cover in my videos on my channel. So you should go and check out the other videos and uh, subscribe, by the way, if you haven't already. So what are the main benefits of lucid dreaming? Why would you want to lucid dream? There are several reasons why you would want to learn how to lucid dream, okay? And I have made another video explaining this, but the main reasons you would want to learn how to lucid dream is you, we're asleep for a third of our lives, okay? Now, that doesn't mean we can dream for a third of our lives, but we can dream for a percentage of that third, which is still a long time. And you were gonna be asleep anyway. You were gonna be not doing anything anyway in that time. So you might as well lose a dream, right? It makes kind of perfect sense when you think about it like that. Secondly, you can practice real life skills and actually improve at those things in waking life. This has been documented. There was a study done about this. It's a pretty interesting thing that I think is mind blowing. I mean, the ability to practice something in your dreams and then be able to really improve at that thing is pretty incredible in my opinion. You can also, and this is, you know, let's not downplay this, you can do anything you can possibly imagine. Any experience, any fantasy, any adventure, you can do that and it will feel so real and so vivid that you'll never want to stop lucid dreaming. It has been said that lucid dreaming can improve your sleep quality. Now, that's kind of a gray area because it really does depend. What normally happens is by focusing on certain things, meditation, being aware, calming your mind down before bed, avoiding blue light before you go to sleep, by doing those things, you will improve your sleep. Yeah, but it's not because of the lucid dreaming, it's because of those things. So that's kind of a gray area. So does lucid dreaming make you more tired? Firstly, before I answer this, just scroll down and leave a comment letting me know what you think. Do you think it makes you more tired? Or actually just leave a comment saying the myths 
the, the craziest myth or statement about lucid dreaming that you've ever heard. And I'll try and reply to them all later. So does lucid dreaming make you more tired? The answer is no. But the reason that people ask that question so often is because if you do it wrong, so specifically I'm talking about the wild technique and the wake back to bed technique. If you do those techniques too often, then of course you'll feel tired because those techniques involve waking yourself up at I think it's like 3 a.m. or something like that, 3 to 5 a.m., depending on your sleep cycles and your specific timings. It's never the same for everyone. But if you do that every single day, if you constantly interrupt your sleep like that, then of course you're gonna feel tired, but it's not the lucid dreaming that's done that. It's the interruption of your sleep. You could very easily lucid dream without waking yourself up and being able to lucid dream without waking up is a good skill to learn. That's what I would say to focus on is the mild technique. If you do the mild technique, it won't make you more tired. It, if anything, it will improve your sleep quality. But when you do the wake back to bed in the wild, you're gonna have a bad time if you do them every single day. So why is lucid dreaming so difficult? Lucid dreaming is difficult because like any skill, when you first learn it, there is a learning curve. You need to build the skills up that will let you actually do it, right? And most people lose motivation way before they even get to that point. The second thing is there's a lot of misinformation out there. People think they know how to do it and they'll be posting in forums, posting in groups and reddits and stuff based on their personal subjective experience instead of actually what's been studied. And a quick note on that is that the mild technique has been studied and shown to be the most effective. So if you're gonna focus on any technique, it's really be the mild. And secondly, you've got to remember that this is a, lucid dreaming is a skill that if you're new to it, it's a skill you've not used before. Being able to be self-aware and to trigger your prospective memory and even to remember your dreams, which I'll get onto in a minute, that's something that most people don't try and do. They, in many cases, have never tried to do those things. So it's a new skill. And like any new skill, you're always gonna suck at the beginning because it's new. <laughs> but like the famous saying goes, neurons that fire together will actually wire together, meaning that the more you do something, the stronger the connections in your brain will become and the easier it will become as well. So I hope that makes sense. By the way, if you want something to follow that is just a simple proven system, just click the link and check out the Lucid Breakthrough course. It will take you step by step through everything you need to learn, everything you've been struggling with. It will explain everything and break it down for you in very simple stages. So I've got a few more questions, but first I wanna just go over one thing which is really important, and that is dream recall. Being able to remember your dreams. And firstly, as I'm doing this, just scroll down and leave a comment saying, how often do you remember your dreams? Do you remember them every night? Or every morning, I should say? Most people don't. And the reason for that is that just like anything, if you don't practice it, or if you don't try and do it, you won't be able to do it you use it or lose it. So if you don't practice writing your dreams down and trying to remember them, then you're not gonna be very good at it because you're not practicing it. So you need to every single morning, specifically when you wake up, really, really set the intention to remember your dreams. Actually set the intention before you go to bed that the next morning you're gonna remember your dreams. When you wake up, take out your journal and the first thing you do should be to try and remember your dreams in as much detail as you can. Most people don't actually do that. They wake up and if they can remember their dreams, great. Sometimes they'll write them down. But most people don't set the intention before they go to bed and they don't you know, set aside five minutes of time to really try and remember their dreams. Okay, I mean, think back to the last time you tried to remember your dreams but couldn't. How long did you keep trying for? The chances are you woke up and you thought, oh, okay, I can't remember any dreams. Fine, let me continue with my day. That's not the way to do it. You need to set aside three to five minutes and then for that time, all you're gonna do is focus on remembering your dreams. Even if you go that whole five minutes without remembering anything, the fact is you sat down to try for that time. So the next day your subconscious mind will think, will say, okay, last time he sat down for five minutes and we didn't remember anything, so let's try and do a bit better today. And then over time, you'll actually remember more and more dreams. So what is sleep paralysis? This is a question I get asked quite often and sleep paralysis is a I don't want to say it's linked to lucid dreaming because it's not really, but what happens is that when you try and lucid dream, by learning some of the techniques and by trying some of the methods, you will actually end up experiencing sleep paralysis more often than not because it's just how it works. You know, by interrupting your sleep, you're going to eventually interrupt it at a point when you're trying to enter sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is when your body paralyzes your muscles to stop you acting out your dreams. It's very useful. If we didn't have it, we would be running around, and this is what some sleep disorders are actually like, where you're sleepwalking or you're kicking things in your bed or you're tossing and turning and hitting things and 
it's dangerous, right? Especially if you share a bed with someone. So sleep paralysis is actually a good thing because it stops you physically moving around in your sleep. However, where it gets tricky and scary is that if you are aware and awake during sleep paralysis, it can be quite scary. It can feel like you're obviously paralyzed because you are paralyzed, but there's really nothing to worry about. There's nothing scary. You know, although it can feel scary, just tell yourself that nothing bad is gonna happen. Nothing can harm you. It's gonna be over in a few minutes and you should be fine. So what is the best thing to do in a lucid dream? The best thing to do in a lucid dream to be honest, is the thing you actually want to do, the thing that you're most excited about doing, because by doing that, you're gonna be motivated to make an effort the next day and to try and lucid dream again. So just focus on whatever is the most exciting thing for you, and you'll have a very, very easy time keeping yourself motivated to learn in the long term. Leave a comment letting me know the most insane thing that you have done or would like to do in a lucid dream. So the truth is, if you're struggling to lucid dream, the Lucid Breakthrough course, I really believe will be the best thing for you. And you can find the link to that in the description. There's even a little video that explains a bit more about it and how it works. But I truly believe that will be the best thing for you. So if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share it, you know, leave a comment, maybe share it on your Instagram, your Facebook, whatever. And uh, I'll try and reply to everyone's comments. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the channel. <laughs> you probably have subscribed already because who would watch like a 45 minute video without subscribing? I mean, maybe you haven't, but I don't know. So I'll see you next time. And hopefully this has helped you to learn how to lucid dream.